Okay, this is the second tutorial for week two. Uh, this tutorial is going to walk you through how to create a simple histogram from a series of numeric data. So you're going to want to follow along with the Excel file that I've uploaded on the Blue Line site. So week two tutorial histogram demo data. And you're also going to want to make sure that you have already updated your version of Excel to the most recent version, which is 2016. And you also need to have the data analysis package or, or toolbox installed because we're going to use those in this demo. So what we have here is a series of uh, made up data looking at the number of enemas performed by first year interns. So um, when we when we do this, we can see we've got a respondents one through seventy five again here, and we've got a range of values. And when you make a histogram, what you need to know is the number of values that fit into some defined ranges. Um, so the first thing that we're going to do here, we have to use this data analysis toolbox. So we go to data data analysis, we want a histogram. There's quite a bit of things here in this data analysis, so you get, might have to scroll to get to histogram. Okay, now what we want to do, um, I'm going to delete these out of here real quick so you can watch me put them in. All right, so the first thing that we're going to need to do is put our input range, okay? So our input range for this we're going to want to select our numbers. We don't want to select our respondents for this. So we want to select number, and then if we hold our shortcut to select the maximum extent of our range, shift, command, down arrow, gets us our entire range of numbers. Okay. Now, because I selected this cell here that says number, we do, we're gonna to have to select where it says labels. If I did not select this cell B3 where it says number, then we would uncheck this. All right, so when we initially run this, we are not going to select anything for bin range. And by doing this, Excel is going to try its hardest to come up with some bins that are going to work for our data. Sometimes this works better than others. And we're gonna leave that blank for now. You have a variety of output options here. You see output range. This is if we wanna put it in the same worksheet or we could add it to some uh, different worksheets. I like to add it to the same worksheet that I'm working on. So we click here, and then we're just going to select where we would like Excel to drop this new data. Okay. At this point, we don't wanna select any of these chart options because we're just trying to figure out the bins. All right, so we hit okay, and let me zoom in a little bit here. All right, so what we see, we have some bins and the frequencies, and you know, this output is not horrible. Uh, it's not incredibly great. It has some strange bin numbers. So um, what exactly do these bin numbers mean? Well, the bins in Excel, so um, zero, this is everything that has a value over here and number of zero and below. Bin seven, looking here, this is going to be everything in column B that has a value of seven going all the way down um, to zero but not including zero. So if you remember from the reading and from the notes on the reading, this is one of those differences between Excel and the way that you typically want to make a histogram, which is exactly where you put those values when they fall on the edges of a bin. Now, um, it may be a little bit confusing Right now, in a moment, I will show you some things that will make that a bit more clear. No, but looking at this, it's it, these values aren't terrible. They're not particularly great. Going by sevens is not a, a very intuitive way to count. Usually, you might want to go by something like fives. All right, but when we look at this, this bin for seven, um, or rather this bin for 14, because I already did seven, 14 is going to be all the values that are 14 going down to seven. Okay, seven is included here, 14 is included here, 21 is included here, and so on and so forth. The other thing that is a little bizarre is we have this category here, this, this more category. 
So we know based on the way the bins are assigned, we know that this means there is one value that is greater than 49. But when you're plotting histogram, you can't really plot more on the axis. So we're going to have to do something a little bit creative for that. So what we want to do now, we essentially use this first run of generating bins, which we have here, to inform our estimation of the next iteration of the data analysis histogram. So let's come down here okay, and let's type in bin and here we're just defining what the bins are. So I know because I already know from these data that they range from um, 0 to about 60. So because we have that weird issue with values of 0 and, and where they fall, let's just go ahead to illustrate this. Uh, have a bin at negative 5 and 0. And once we have two numbers here, if we want to continue this pattern down, we can select that and then simply drag down. And you see there's that little number popping up that tells you what number it's going to go to. So now we have bins going from negative 5 down to 65. And now we're going to do a, another iteration of the histogram under data analysis using these newly defined bins to see if we can't get values that make a little bit more sense. All right, so we come up to data analysis. We already have histogram chosen. If you've already run it on, on the data, it tends to retain those values, so we still have our input range. And we're going to want to select now some bins. So select this, drag down. Okay, we see our range here now showing up. We have labels. If, if you're using labels for input range, also use labels for bin range. We don't want this to go to E3 because that's going to overwrite up here. Okay, so instead, we'll click here, delete this out, and where we would like this to go now, let's just stick that right here. Um, I have simply chosen G15 because it's keeping it right in line with these data. And we don't really want to plot this just yet, so we'll go ahead and hit this. All right, so um, now we see that these numbers are lining up uh, a little bit differently. Okay, so, um, well, they're not really lining up differently yet, but this, this is what we need to adjust. So if we look here at negative 5, uh, we would not expect there to be any values that are less than 0 uh, down to negative 5 because we're looking at the number of NMS performed. So it has to be a whole number. It has to be 0 or greater. So we really just included this value here to satisfy our curiosity that it is calculating this correctly here. All right. Now, we have to deal with the way that Excel is grouping things into bins. So it is strange to have a bin with a negative value, so we'll adjust that. Um, the values at the interval edges, okay, so here we have interval edges, negative 5, 0, 5, 10, 15, 20, etc. The values at the interval edges should go into the upper bin rather than the lower bin. So the way that we can force Excel to do this correctly is to generate some bin values that are just a tiny bit lower than the actual breakpoints. Because these are whole numbers, this is quite easy with this data set to do this. So we're going to create a new set of bins that's just a tiny bit smaller. Okay, so what I'm going to do here, I'm going to call this slightly adjusted bins just because that is obvious to me exactly what that is and we're just going to adjust say this negative 5 we're going to take that to be negative 5.1 okay and the 0 we're going to subtract 0 0.1 from that so we're going to say negative 0 0.1 here now just like we did before we can drag this down all right, so we have negative 5.1 up to 64.9.
And what we want to do now is run histogram again. Okay, so we still have our data range. We want to change our bins to now use these bins. Uh, we want to change our output and we can just stick that right here. And at this point, we, we would like to go ahead and, uh, and, and actually generate a chart, okay? So we'll select chart output. All right, now when this happens, uh, this will probably happen to you as well. And you can see that it does things a bit strangely. So this histogram is tiny. Uh, we can just drag this up here for now and we can stretch that out a little bit right? and we'll mess with the formatting here in just a little bit of this histogram but I wanted to go through and, and highlight some things here. Right? You see that the x-axis is being labeled based on this column right here so we have more showing up here which is bizarre. Um, the formatting of this histogram is needs quite a bit of work to make it aesthetically um, pleasing in terms of a scientific plot, but we can see that our labels, slightly adjusted bins, and frequency are showing up nicely here. All right, so um, if we just take a look though at, at these values and how using the slightly adjusted bins have altered things relative to um, using the bins over here, we can see that the numbers are differing ever so slightly because we are now grouping individual respondent values into the upper rather than the lower bins. Okay. So what do I mean by that? If we just follow this across here, okay, um, over here, if we're looking at zero, this is going to be anything with a value of zero down to just above negative five. So there's one value of zero. If we look over here, um, I'll just highlight this so that it's easy to see. There's one value of zero here. So the value of zero is showing up here. But if something is on the edge, we want it to move into the bin that is above it. Okay, so by adjusting this ever so slightly, we see that this one is no longer in this bin and it's going to pop into the bin right above it. And you can go through and <coughs> for your own curiosity, um, satisfy your own curiosity looking through here to see that that does in fact adjust in that way. All right, so we're looking here, we've got our slightly adjusted bins and our frequencies, and we need to deal with the labels on our plot. Okay, so first of all, let's just sort of go through and fix our plot up um, just a little bit here. Okay, if we click on, if we double click on frequency, we can tell that to, um, we can tell that to move location, but also we don't really need a legend on here. And we get rid of our our title over here. Okay. And if we just go through, so these are very similar steps to what we already took. Okay, it's a major tick mark, go outside. Um, we also want to come over here, we can make that black, we can make it bold, make it a little bit larger. When you come down here to the other axis, okay. do the same thing. Okay. Remember all of these steps, these are things that we have um, done before. 
And because this is a histogram, okay, one thing about this, with a histogram, you want these bars to touch each other. So right now, um, even if this was just a, a bar chart of categorical data, these bars are very far apart, and they, they look very funny. So if we take gap width down to zero, now the bars of this histogram are touching each other. And this is the way you want it to look for histogram. Again, because we just have one thing, series overlap doesn't do anything here. All right, so we can go to fill. Um, we can leave it blue. It's just a solid blue. So solid blue is perfectly fine. If we look at the border, you probably don't want it to have a gray border. You could put a, a black border around your bars. Um, additionally, you could you could take that border, uh, that border color, and you could say no line, so that there's no line in between them. Um, that's sort of a matter of personal preference. I tend to like to put the line just because it makes it a little bit easier to tell them apart. You may have grid lines pop up. If you have grid lines pop up, you want to go ahead and delete those out as well. Okay, I'll change this here. Uh, you have to be a little bit careful about your axis labels. Um, the reason why you need to be a little bit careful about these axis labels is because we are looking at um, numbers. So on, on this bottom axis here, on the x-axis, okay, it, it says slightly adjusted bins, and we'll, we'll adjust this in a little bit. Here, frequency, it's, it's plotting this here, so this, this is the frequency, but what we're really looking at on this y-axis is we're really looking at the number of interns. So the number of interns that performed a certain number of enemas. Okay, so this would be number of interns, and then here we would want to call this x-axis the number of enemas performed. So we're looking at a histogram of the number of enemas performed um, versus the number of interns. Okay, um, we need to get tick marks on this x-axis. So the way to do that, if we click on the x-axis, if we look at the axis position here, um, axis position, if we change that from between tick marks to on tick marks, and let's actually change that back for a second here. It's a major type, we'll go outside. And if we have it at between tick marks, you can see that they come down at the edges of the bars. But with a histogram, as we discussed in, in the reading and in the supplemental notes about the reading, you want these labels to show up in the middle of the bars. So to make them show up in the middle of the bars, we tell it to position the axis <coughs> on the tick marks. Okay, Doing that, now we have tick labels coming down in the middle of the bars and we have our labels there. All right. We still have a slight problem though in that the labels that we are looking at, um, these labels are a little bit strange. Um, we have you know, negative 5.1, which we talked about. We don't really want negative values on the axis. That doesn't make any sense. Um, also, we have this more category over here. So uh, just for sort of illustrative purposes here, uh, we'll make another column. Here we're going to call this labels. Okay. And just continue this down. Okay, we don't need one for this more category. Um, also, if we click on here, let's go ahead and get rid of this more category because we don't need to be plotting out to there. So we're going to 
drag this up here. Remember, this is the process of selecting our data. Okay, so now we go out to 64.9. We don't go out to more, which, which makes no sense. All right, the other thing that we can do here, uh, we don't really need to go out to um, the, this value here. So we can move here. So we're, we're going to eliminate. We're just changing the data that we're plotting. So um, now we're only plotting this right here. All right, so um, we still have these values, though, that that aren't really representative of the middle of the bar. We adjusted these by 0.1, but if we look at, say, this this first bar here, our first bar really it, that we want to show is meant to represent um, 0 to 5. So the middle of the bar, 0 to 5, um, that's going to be this one here, um, represented by, by C. Um, the middle of this bar, 0 to 5, is going to be 2.5. Okay? And then the middle of the next one is going to occur at 7.5. Once you have these two in there, again, you can drag them down. Um, you can also drag them up to fill in here. Um, the middle of these bins that we're not wishing to show would be negative 7.5 and negative 2.5, which doesn't really make a lot of sense. Um, and the reason that I added this label column in here is because we can we can go here to the axis. Uh, Sometimes you don't have to go through this whole process that I'm doing here, but a lot of the time it can it can help to clarify what exactly it is I'm doing. So here are the y values. We know where that's coming from. Our x-axis values. Right now we see we're looking at column K. So column K is the slightly adjusted bins. If we want to change K to this column here, M, where I've put the letters, we can just click right here and type M in place of K. And when I do that, now we have these letters here. For some students, it makes a bit more sense to them if they're looking at letters, and then we can sort of slowly replace these letters with what these values should be. Okay, so um, looking at this, we now have our tick marks in between, but we need to figure out what these values really should be. And what we've done, we've already figured that out right here. Okay, looking at what those values for the middle of those bins should be. Okay, so we can simply copy this and paste it over. And what we have now is an x-axis that has tick marks in the middle of each of the bars, and these values are representative of what the value mid bar would be. Okay. Uh, this is a little bit funny. We, we have a value out here of 62.5. We don't have a bar there. An easy fix for adjusting that aesthetically is just to come right in here and delete that 62.5. Okay. So when we're looking at this now, we have a tick mark, but we don't have a 62.5 showing up down here. We also have 2.5 here. We we could select the columns and we could alter this. Now this is not the way you want to do it, but I'm just showing you what would happen if we did that. The problem with this is that now this 2.5 is crossing the y-axis and we only have half that bar. Okay, so I'm going to hit undo here and uh, undo again so that we can come back to plotting what we want to plot. All right. But we don't want a negative value on our x-axis. So the easy fix for that, we could just come in here and delete that. We're not plotting out to negative 7.5, but we just go ahead and delete that anyways. All right, so now our histogram goes from 2.5 to 57.5. Our axes are labeled nicely. Our bars are touching. You can, <coughs> you can put a border around them 
or choose not to put a border around them. If your tick marks over here on your y-axis were too close to each other or were looking cluttered, then you might want to adjust that a little bit. Now, one issue that we have is that while the histogram looks nice, these values are a little bit strange. Okay, because the values that we're looking at, we're looking at 2.5, 7.5, 12.5. It would be nicer if the values that we were looking at were nice, even whole numbers. So 5, 10, 15, 20. Uh, and you can, you can alter things so that you can force the values mid-bar to be... Um, 5, 10, 15, 20, etc. Uh, but in order to do that, the easiest way to do that is to look at what you know now. Okay? You know this histogram looks good. You know what you would like those mid values to be. And in order to redo this, you would have to backtrack again um, this process that we went through um, working through here. And instead of picking bin values and then adjusted bin values that were at those edges, you know, negative 5, 0, 5, 10, 15, you would pick edge values that would force the middle of the bar to be where you want it to be. So, for instance, you would choose bins with edges of like 7.5 to 12.5. If you had a bin that went from 7.5 to 12.5, well, then the middle of 7.5 and 12.5 and and would be 10. Okay. Likewise, the next bend, 12.5 to 17.5, that would give you a midpoint of 15 and so forth. So this histogram could be redone um, using those methods, but I'm going to go ahead and leave it like this because I think this walks you through the steps that you need to know so that you can generate your own histograms. So if we want to sort of think about the steps that you typically need to perform, um, you are going to start with your raw data. When you start with that raw data, the very first step, you're typically going to run the data analysis histogram function to get some initial bin values. And remember, that's what we were doing right here. You're going to then use these bin values to inform your decision of values for the bins to use. So that's what we did right here. And then we ran that histogram function again to get these values. Now, if you thought a little bit harder at the start of this, you could at this point choose those bin values of, say, 7.5, to 12 and a half that are going to force those centers to go where you want them to go. Um, at this point, I didn't want to do that because it takes a little bit of thinking and knowing where you're going to get to that point. But now that you know where you're going, when you make your own histograms, you can think about those things back here at this step. Okay? Then a lot of times, then we might need to make, uh, we might need to use some slightly adjusted bins so that we can get things to go where we want them to go into the proper bins. You may want to generate some dummy labels like we did here when we were using some letters and then sort of filling in what those mid values should be. And then of course the, the final step, you would uh, want to make sure that you go through your entire histogram, make sure that you check everything, it looks nice, um, it's, it's in good scientific format. And then you would also, I, I won't put one on here, but you would also want to do a figure legend just like we did in the bar graph tutorial, and you would just put that right underneath your histogram. Okay, so that is the tutorial on generating histograms in Excel. It's not a perfect process, but it's much improved from a few years ago. And now that you have concluded this tutorial, you can move on to the assignment that you have for histograms. You don't have to wait until after lab to complete that assignment.